Life Force podcast. You, you, oh. you do that intro, but that's not the way you normally talk. I want people to know that. Yeah. Like when, when we see you and we haven't seen you in a while, you don't go, Hello, I am Lewis Brindley. No, Hello, it's nice course. to see you. When we get on when we get on to Discord, he's like, oh, hey. <laughs> just gotta make a cup of tea. Back in a minute. Hey guys. Well, well, it's, well look, it's it's just a little thing. I don't know, it gets me in the mood, you know. You gotta psych yourself up for this. You do. Yeah. Uh, gotta gotta put your put your game face on, put your game hat on. Do you do like um, on. when you're when you're talking and stuff? Do you do lots of arm and hand gestures like an Italian? No, you should pin, I'm much pinch mm. your front finger, pinch your thumb and forefinger together, and wave your hands in front of your face when you really want to appeal to someone. Why? Yeah. Molto bene. It's a pizza. It, I, I love that. Uh, when, when, when you go to Italy, they really do do that. Why? They really do oh, yeah. do that. They do it's do part do of that. the language to to speak with. They really do do that. Yeah. It's part of the it's part of the the the, the vigor of that, that that passion. You know, you have to do passion, it yeah. as well, or else you don't get the message across. Honestly, words are not enough. If you could supplement them with hand gestures and like pictures, yeah, and you know, graphs, great. I'm I'm down. I think we should all be more willing to do presentations. I think, that what, mm. I think that's what that Mr. Big song was about, uh, More Than Words. The song More Than Words was talking about More just Than that. Words is all you have to say yeah. to make me feel like... This way. This way. Then more you than words wouldn't have to say, say that you love me. There's a lot of say's in there. Because just... I'd already... No. Say, I mean, no. <laughs> they, they, they just rhyme say. It's lazy. You can't rhyme say with say three times. Lazy. Like, there's you could say way, blue jay. There's, there's. I wonder how many times like people have got the wrong idea from words and it's led to like bad stuff to happen. You know, because it's not. It's never clear. Like I was. Watch, I watched um 1917 yesterday, which oh, is yeah. um. <coughs> was new, it good? I thought it was. Great. Yeah, yeah, a lot of people really have said good. that. A lot of nineteen seventeen. Really yeah, yeah. I, I really want to see it. I do really want to. I see mean, it. you you guess you've heard that it's shot in one shot. Yeah. That's the idea, and that kind of really enhances the movie. Actually, it makes it feel a lot like Mad Max Fury Road or something like. In that, there's this constant thing going on. You know, it's always it's like a non it's like a roller coaster, mm. which is how I think movies should be. I think movies should be this sort of thrill ride, which kind all of all movies you, don't want you to get think off, should you know? be a thrill ride roller coaster. Yeah, not all. You but, should go work all, in Hollywood, mate. That's what that's their well, whole like a, bang at a, the moment. A, a pure movie, like where does I that leave it, movies like Schindler's List? But if like you're changing, <laughs> you well, imagine I, the critics I, came out of Schindler's <laughs> List. A roller coaster ride of a movie. Non-stop <laughs> wall to wall get action, off. shot in one shot. <laughs> I think it's well, I. I I just, I just feel very strongly that that it suits the medium well. I mean, you could do other stuff too, but I think that I just think it's great, really, really good. It's, it feels like a thing that feels like a pet project almost. For someone like, oh, it's going to be quite hard work for us to shoot it in one shot, but, but almost like a gimmick. Though it could easily become like a gimmick. Well, uh, actually, did you see um, Children of Men? Um, Have you seen that? Yeah, why a long time so that, ago. That's a great movie, and it has a few sequences in it that are shot. As if it's a single shot, because they, like it is, they they had to use very clever um, camera work. One of the things they had, there's a scene where they're in a car in the woods and they're attacked from all sides, and the camera has to be able to come in and out of the car and pan around the outside of it, still looking in. And it's that like if you look at the behind the scenes, they built this massive framework to go on the outside of the car with all the the jib equipment on and everything, and then it's all green screened out and, and digitally removed. But it's it's incredible. I, I I must say, it must be terrifying as an actor to think, oh God, please don't let me just fucking sneeze or or like trip over or fart or something and ruin yeah. this entire shot. And the rehearsals, the practice, everything has to be just right when there are special effects involved. Because later in that same movie, there's a big extended single shot battle scene where there's like 100, 100 plus people involved and special effects going off and it's it's insane it's amazing it's a, but i i wonder if like you said it almost takes you out of the film because you're marveling at this technological thing or if you just almost don't notice and you're swept along by it because it yeah. feels so much more urgent and like you're really there i don't know which it I is i think you're right like there there is this danger that stuff will pull you out of the movie like seeing uh, like sometimes a famous actor can do that like who you don't expect to be well, there like, like we, we spoke cameo. about this on a previous 
podcast Did we? about unexpected cameos taking you out of the moment. Yeah, because there yeah. was Benedict Cumberbatch is there as like an army officer, and he suddenly like turns around and he's and yeah, I'm like, oh fuck me, it's oh, Benedict. Not, not Benedict uh, again. Yeah, sick but, of this. Uh, actually, guy. honestly, really thought it was a great movie. I would, rec- would recommend it. Um, right. Yeah, it's been out for a while now. So I went to the cinema with Alex, and it was literally just me. And Alex. Oh, that's perfect because I want to. I want to <laughs> go is, see it. I might see it uh, this weekend. I'll just go by myself and. And go see it, and because uh, I like going to the cinema, like middle There's of the something day, something very luxurious no about yeah. being the only one in the cinema. Yeah. I don't know. There are a few it films I've like... seen that way, and it always feels good. Yeah, yeah. It's like having your own personal cinema. I, f- I feel like I feel like Steven Spielberg going out to like my backyard <laughs> and just you know, watching it in my own fucking private. That cinema. movie that we saw, the uh, the Shining Part Two, was like that. Remember, there's like one dude in the theater. Oh, the, you're right. We what went back like, in the middle of the yeah. day. Yeah. Doctor, yeah, that Doctor was, Feelgood that was or whatever. Doctor Sleep. That was Doctor fine. Sleep. Yeah, that's fine. You know what? I saw the film um, The Perfect Storm in the Trocadero Center and I was alone. Was that the one with uh, Marky Mark in it? It had Marky Mark in it and it had George Clooney in it. <laughs> And I yeah, think it had right, John C. Riley in it. Oh, and they're right. fishermen and they're stuck out at sea that's in this right, horrible right. perfect remember. storm. Which is a true story. It's a true story. Although the film fabricated. I used to work at uh I used to work at Blockbuster Video when that came out on video. I remember we had like a wall of that stupid fucking uh well, it was like a like DVD at the time right. when it came out. Oh right. right so, so you weren't rewinding. Right, so them. You, you worked at Blockbuster. <laughs> I'm very curious. Yeah. Did you ever get in a shitload of copies of something and no fucker wanted to see yeah, it? Yeah, yeah. There was a whole bunch of movies like that where I, I can't think of like specific ones, but it, it did happen for sure. So you Blockbuster's You'd like get this like a is wall be of big. them. Yeah. And yeah. It, and it'd be like it, it, they thought like they were anticipating that, you know, these copies of these would just be fucking rented out constantly or whatever and it was just like it was it wasn't like that so were yeah, there I, films that people that you you guys had like a, just one or two copies of that always seemed to be out and people were always asking about well um yeah like a certain movie would come out and if we didn't have enough of them then yeah have you got Debbie does Dallas <laughs> yeah there, there was, but like a big movie if a big movie came out and we had tons of copies of it and a lot of them didn't rent out the week after that half of them would be on sale like like as previously viewed like it would like cut down right. like the rental wall sort well, of thing and then yeah, yeah. put them on sale because I remember like rental VHS's you used to have to if you were a rental shop you had to buy a rental VHS and it was like a hundred quid or something like that and so it was quite an expensive like um, thing I guess it stopped the the shops from like just selling them, you know, because yeah, because yeah. the stuff that was rental was before it was available to buy. That's or before right. It was yeah, able to like be on TV, so they were more expensive, and you could sort of you could only get them, yeah, copies of them like that, and so they were kind of always a bit more valuable, but. Often you'd get these tapes like X rental. You'd be able to buy them. Yeah. After a while, I, like, and, when um, I started working at Blockbuster, they were still expensive, but shit quality. Yeah, yeah that really point. bad. You know it mean? was still it was still like tons of VHS. Like when I started working at Blockbuster, maybe a year after I worked there, that's when DVDs started like getting bigger and got to the point where we were just getting DVDs in instead of VHS. But that didn't last for for very long because it fucking went bankrupt and closed yeah. down like a couple of years later. But because uh, at that point. That's when Netflix started, because Netflix started as a mailing DVD service where you you subscribed and they would post you DVDs to watch. And yeah. when you'd finished, you sent them back. And only once you'd sent them back uh, would they send the, the next lot out. So you made a wish list of films like, here are the 20 films I want to see. And they would send you some that they had, and yeah. you, so it was like it was it was cool because you got this post. You're like, oh, what is it? What is it? Yes, and you you know you got that film you wanted to see. You'd watch it, and you'd quickly send it back to get the next thing on your list. It was great. Like it was really. Do you remember? It was, uh, it was so. Do you remember hype. like? Uh, did you ever have like Columbia House and all that kind of stuff? You know where you'd buy like you could get like twelve CDs or tapes for free, but then you were in a year contract where you had to buy one like every month you like you, no. you had to buy one every month no i know i, I never mean I, I, that. I, I think the novelty wears off quick but i think the psychology of that is actually really powerful that the whole going to some physical place and putting your tape in the mailbox and then getting another one through the door and opening it up like that whole process is so much i don't know different to the netflix where we have everything available to us all the time yeah yeah but we don't want to watch any of it and none of it's exciting <laughs> you know it's, isn't it isn't it bizarre yeah like you that, just become that spoiled for choice it's kind of like um i don't know if you guys like remember those um they I, they were they were like illegal game cartridges you could get for like nintendo and i think they had them for super nintendo as well where you'd like plug it in uh, you, you put it in but it would have like 
I don't know, like a hundred games on it or whatever. But they were they weren't translated or anything. They were just like all Japanese or or whatever. But I remember like borrowing one off my friend, thinking, "Oh man, like a hundred games! I can't believe it!" And then I I would play like maybe five of them for like two seconds and then just move move on like because you just become so spoiled for choice that you just don't even care anymore it's just like it, yeah there's, it's, it's not not even exciting like you said it's, you're just like yeah whatever 100 games but ah, also if like, they're all crap you're like Ugh, i'm like that with know, my steam like, library now i got all these games i don't want to fucking play any of them <laughs> it's just like i've got yeah, like 600 games in my so. steam library and I, I, so. I could care less like half of them i haven't even played I, I, honestly like for me for me it's been about like looking at top lists like top 10 lists of movies top 10 lists of like um top 10 lists of games but also like some other like top 10 lists of like books and things like this and and i've been sort of working my way down these lists and I've actually found a lot of of joy out of that, like just sort of ticking off like, okay, there's these top five sci-fi books that I've never read, you know, and I've been going through them. <coughs> and some of them are fucking super <laughs> out of date. But uh, Bodega's still available, second edition. Nice. Big, big inspired. And actually reading these sort of, I, it makes me realize how you obviously have read some of these How much you ripped novels. off to use in your own um, book. <laughs> gives me a context. It's good. This very retro thing, VHS, is that I remember, one thing I remember is that they would sometimes get a little bit, you know, glitchy and blurry and yeah. sort of, you know, like that classic thing, when a bit's coming up where there's either a bit of nudity. You get like audio warping and yeah. stuff like that, yeah. Where people have clearly paused it for a what while. What about Please or... Be Kind, Rewind, the stickers? Yeah. You had to, because like, so, that was the so... thing, when you had to return, when it was time to return your VHS tape back to the video store... Uh, you had to rewind it, like, or, or uh, you you were considered. I think some places actually find you yeah. if uh, you didn't rewind the. They the would tape. open the box to see if the tape was in there. Because man, it... there's nothing more annoying than getting home and wanting to watch Debbie Does Dallas. Um, Dick opening in the case and realizing that, hang on, this fucking asshole didn't rewind it. Because it took got... a long fucking time. Like, Hell we yeah, went in, this yeah. is no joke, man. Yeah, we wasted a lot Rewinding. of time. Oh my god, just Rewinding, waiting for yeah. shit to rewind. Like, uh, to save batteries on my Walkman, I used to put a pencil through the hole of the tape and spin it. Yeah. That's what you used to do. If you put a pencil through the, the, the hole and span it that around. That would have taken you ages. Well, sometimes you had to, to do that battery, if you're... Save dudes. If your um, <laughs> car, car stereos were the worst for eating tapes, right? But walk, yeah. some Walkmans were really bad, too, especially if they started running out of batteries. They, oh, yeah. They'd grind Ooh. slower, and then they'd start eating up your tape. <laughs> Oh my god! Do you know what that that sounds like? Such a trendy man thing to do, right? Like you can see a guy with his Walkman, like getting the tape out and then getting a pencil out and just walking along the street, like rewinding it slowly. Yeah. Like that's such a it's do you know it's that physical again. It's that physical like uh, like action of, of, of it's like it's like the part of the reason why Tom and Barry like still smoke right and i'm like why do you why do you smoke you know come on it's 2020 like no one is smoking now like vape or something i don't know like get with the times and they're like well they don't smoke that much but they also like the physical action of actually rolling a cigarette it's, they find it quite like soothing and calming and yeah, like yeah, the physical thing nice. yeah. part of the reason that people like playing cards for real or rolling dice for real whereas when you do it on digitally it doesn't feel you know you're, you're detached from that physical interaction and that physical interaction is such a big part of like that experience um, and it's why board games in person are so much more better than them digital, you know, because it, I, I don't know, like it, it's hard for a game to even replicate that action of rolling a dice and the satisfaction. Yeah. yeah. Although that, I, I do you know? note that uh, Tabletop Simulator has the one thing I really like to do when a, a board game is clearly over and you can flip the table in, in Tabletop Simulator. Oh, yeah. No, that is absolutely great. If I mean, that is, that, is, that, that is the opposite. That's like an enhancement. It is. I mean, that's something you can, that's the wish fulfillment. That's why at truck stops or like petrol stations or like um, these these places, they have these like GTA based trucking games. So a trucker can just drive like a madman, drive off the road and then this, realize, get it, like, get, get it out of their system, yeah. you know, because sometimes I think when you're truck, I, I, I assume, I don't know, I've never had to do a long haul trucking, but sometimes I think when you're driving along a straight road for 12 hours or whatever in America, you're just going to want to be like, Oh, fuck it. What what would happen if I just drove off the road right now? I don't know do if I mean? anyone would ever do that, honestly. But no, um, no, I don't think people would do. But I think they get that stupid little idea in the in the in their head of what would it be like, you know? Sure. And what would happen? Probably shitty. Um, I guess. I think you could. Well, probably, yeah. yeah. For, it'd be certainly really shitty. catastrophic. But then yeah. really bad. But it yeah. might just pop into the head like I could just turn this wheel. Like the like the 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 the, the idea of the crazy trucker. Who's got white line fever? And, you know, his his eyes are bloodshot, and he's hopped up on amphetamines or meth or whatever the hell he's hell he's taking. He's like, I could just turn this wheel when he sees a car coming the other way, but they don't. It always reminds don't. me of that. 
I can't remember that quote. Some someone absolutely someone famous and much smarter than me, and I've I always I remember the, I remember the quote, but it was it was that sort of you know mankind advances. It might have been me who said providing that quote. safe <laughs> outlets for their animal urges. You know, so so you know like violent video games are you know a way to like satisfy. Yeah, kind of that, that's why that nowadays the world is such a chill place. Well, comparatively, it is though. Really, it provides like you know a, a way to get your frustrations out. You know, people are raging at Dark Souls and not raging at their mum or I don't know. <laughs> they still are though. That's but like they not everybody are. plays. Like, I don't know. Like I don't a know. A very small portion of society plays Dark Souls. So. I think I mean I think I'm positive generally about video games. Oh, and I'm very the positive. Idea of, about, and, I think of this great. stuff and about like these types of things. And I think it's a good. I think hobby. I'm generally positive about the world. I think I think the internet is this scary thing. By the way, just before we go off this topic, I noticed that there was like an uptick. Apparently, I saw a news article that because of the coronavirus mm. and all this like pandemic stuff, yeah. people have been watching World War Z and <laughs> Contagion yeah, and all these zombie have. movies. Like, like, pe- like, I love the idea that people are like, oh, the coronavirus, isn't that exciting? Let's, let's, let's watch, watch some World zombie Z. movies. Oh, you know what? I wonder if it's necessarily, I don't know if it's necessarily that they're watching them or maybe Netflix is promoting them because they're thinking, this is what people want to see. They're all scared of uh, viruses. We'll get some more plays out of these. No, but I love it. I, I, do you know what? Like, part of, I mean, I'm terrified about, you know, this stuff as much as anyone is, and it's very serious. And you should you? be careful, blah, blah, blah. But I do think it's like, a little bit of a tingle of like excitement that like people are you know the zombie vi- virus is out there you know I, I can see why people are man there's a fucking billion viruses out there like it, I mean oh you're right it's, yeah it's absolutely. not it, it's not it's not scary is it like like uh, like a couple of hundred people have died yeah but you got to remember too that like this this originated in a place with like terrible fucking hygiene. Terrible fucking standards to do with like the preparation of animals uh, for consumption and everything, and it's like I, I don't know I I don't know what fucking people expect like like of course shit like this is gonna get out and spread and stuff like if people are just being fucking um, not good about staying clean yeah, and hy- if people are eating and- like. I mean, uh, if you're eating like a fucking rat's ass, well, yeah, you're probably going to (laughs) get sick. You know, like uh, realistically. It's not even like eating a rat's ass. It's like having like on the counter of a convenience store, you know, it's like a little impulse buy, a whole tray full of like deer, deer heads or whatever. Do you know what I mean? Like fucking... What, or like, or like deer livers. It's like weird fucking shit. Like, oh yeah, yeah. just pick up a snack pack of fifteen deer livers. And, and like, I get what I the get fuck? that once it's contracted, it can it can spread and everything. And they gotta they gotta be careful. Like, I mean, like a couple of hundred people dying is uh, is 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 pretty bad. But I mean, I just yeah, I don't want to seem I, I don't, like, don't, don't want to seem culturally insensitive over this either. By the way, but there's a, like a bubble tea shop that I go to like just up the road, and they it's like a Chinese run place, really nice place. Jeez, really, that is really already and they've culturally got, insensitive. They got this big they've got this big like um fridge um and well half the like the menus in chinese so it obviously caters to like the chinese students and like the local sort of asian population it's great right but um they've got this massive sort of huge fridge and in it is just you look at it and you're like oh my god and it's like it's full of like 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 be like beef beef tongue and you know sure. like pig pig kidney like just just full of the most th- disgusting sounding meats i don't think that you could you could think and of. honestly i don't think that in itself is is at all a problem as long as it's prepared like uh in in a clean environment and stuff i think what's happening is that in a lot of places like there, there's just a lot of complacency you know people probably aren't washing their hands as much as they should people probably aren't like taking a, enough care with preparing some of this stuff um, and then it, it, it's just inevitable that shit like this is going to get out and spread around. No, you're and stuff right. Like that. But I, th- I think it's more likely to happen if people are, if, if it's in the culture to eat sort of cheap meats. Yeah. Um, I, I, pff, but no, as a, speaking as someone who's, you know, now like a bit of a asshole about that stuff, maybe I shouldn't be criticizing. I it. think it's a worry if you're, if you're from that place, for sure. I don't think people should be eating rat asses, though, or bat, no, like, biting their heads No, but I don't think people should be freaking out about this stuff either, like they seem to, you know, like... Even no, you're right, that's the other thing. I think media like, has built this coronavirus up to be this vast threat, yeah. um, and I think people should take it seriously as well, but 
at the same time, I think I mean, that it, like it was um, kind of the same thing with it's a like bit of a hysteria. bird flu and and SARS. Remember SARS and and everything. And it's like, but you can't you can't treat it seriously enough. Really, you should people 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 are gross. They're sneezing and fucking. Yeah, of course. Honestly, but... everyone needs a fucking bit of advice on not to sneeze on their hand and then you know yeah. kiss kiss someone with it or whatever. I don't know. Fuck whatever you're doing. Well, this Jesus. is why when I use public transport. I try not to touch any of the poles. Right. Or That's a bit racist. Jeez, you should be touching them anyway. Like The poles. <laughs> <laughs> They're hardworking. <laughs> that, that, there's a dad joke for you. There's one. That is. <laughs> Gotcha. Jesus. Gotcha. So no, I, I'm. I, I just like the idea that that. Sort of, do you reckon that stuff happens for other sort of things that people? I don't know when it's. Yeah, of course it does. I don't know when there's like a big murder murder spree going on. People are watching a murder mystery. Yeah, I don't know. of like, course. Do people, of course it, it is. It's all. Do people feed that kind of that? Th- I mean, it's like part of our culture, right? Like that. We it, does it enhance the movie knowing that there's like a zombie apocalypse going we're, on? We're obsessed. You know, or you could like you could imagine shit, it in though. your head. Like go to any bookstore and look at like the 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 categories for books and stuff. The true crime section is massive, and people have an appetite to read all of that stuff. They're, they want to hear fasc- all the horrible they're shit. Fascinated that yeah, by it, they really. Yeah. Do. So yeah, every time something happens. Like if there's a big earthquake or like the tsunami or whatever, I'm sure that disaster movies saw a huge uptick. Like it's it, it's just human nature, right? Like I, I don't Did know. You, we have you, these imaginations you, that need to be fed. Do you get excited by it as well? In a kind of, do you feel guilty about being excited by it? Do you see what I mean? Uh, about what? About disasters? About like I don't know. About do you feel guilty virus about being outbreaks? excited that there's a zombie virus going going on? You know, if there's a zombie I'm outbreak, I'm not excited did about that though. Like. Uh, so no, I don't feel guilty about it because I don't. It's not. It's not something that interests me in the slightest. Like it, it okay. hasn't prompted me to go and like. I think some people are like e- eating their popcorn, or, yeah. like following it really closely sure. and passionately. And I don't know whether they should feel bad about that or not. I don't think they should. Um, I, I think that it's just a part. Of, it's it's part of who we are. I'm old fashioned. Um, like the new new series, The Curb Your Enthusiasm, started. So I just been oh, watching I that. can't wait. Yeah, there's Did two you, episodes yeah. out already. It's good. Um, I can't Where, wait. Oh. Interesting. I'll have to watch that. Yeah, it's so very, watch. it's oh very themed around cancel culture this season. So yeah. Oh, yeah. is he is he a little bit politically incorrect? Kind of in modern terms, like does he? Because some people are kind of quite unapologetically. I don't think he's. I think it's typical Larry David in that it is massively exaggerated. He, he uses things like I, I know one of the things he does is if he doesn't want to talk to someone, he or, or he wants to piss people off, he puts on a, a MAGA hat. Right now, obviously, in <laughs> yes. California, yeah. that's like a, oh my God, you know, it's like that. That's yeah, really... yeah, yeah, yeah. He, he so avoids he... like a lunch date with a guy he doesn't want to have a lunch date with. Another really funny thing this season is that he, he has like an altercation with this guy called Mocha Joe, who yeah. runs a coffee shop. Uh, and he decides that he he is he's he doesn't like the way that Mocha Joe operates. He's got wobbly tables and his coffee is cold and all this stuff. Uh, so he he leases the place next to Mocha Joe's. He's going to open up his own spike coffee shop <laughs> 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 to put Mocha Joe under. Fuck me, oh, man. Oh, I love that. Yeah, it's that very is funny. such like a sweet, sweet revenge thing funny. that like yeah. you dream <clears throat> about being able to do that stuff, yeah, right? Absolutely. Like if you were opened Just Chips, a, a competitor to Just Chips called Not Only Chips or Not Just Chips, yeah. and they, you sell <laughs> chips and one other thing. Yeah. Nuggets. Nuggets. Yeah. yeah. The thing with Larry David is like, and like the formula of the show is that no matter what he does, he he seldom gets away with anything, right? Yes. Like, he he never wins. Yeah. That, that's something important. always comes back to bite him in the ass, and it's and yeah. sometimes those are very intricately uh, drawn out or whatever, and sometimes they're like immediate. But it just it's just the, the charm of the show, right? It just makes. But it so I also like funny. sometimes he does get a win. Yeah. And when he does, it feels great, right? Like it's yeah. it's very funny. But there's like the I mean, one of my favorite episodes. The 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 end to the episode is one of the funniest things. He's in this this toilet, like the, in the men's room, and he's hidden something down the front of his trousers. And this child comes in and he talks to her and he gives her a hug and she feels the hard thing in the front of his trousers, which is like a pen or a torch or something. And she looks down and runs out and she says to her parents, 
Larry David hugged me in the bathroom. He's got something hard in his trousers. <laughs> and all you can hear is the entire room of adults going, what oh, the my God! And he just oh God, jumps yeah. out the bathroom window, and that's the end of the episode. <laughs> <laughs> oh, and I mean, he's, good, not, yeah. he's not he's not commenting. Well, he's not making some clever social but comment. But that kind of thing is like your worst nightmare. Yeah, he's just thinking, what would it's be like, the it's worst like, thing What is the happen? most awkward nightmare yeah. that could possibly happen to me? Uh, yeah, and there's and, no and, way to explain it. No. Nobody's going to believe him because, no. you know, nobody ever There's believes no him. There's no way out. Exactly. You, you you run into these things in real life, like, occasionally, and you're like, oh, f-. And it's up, sometimes they, they, they're close to happening, and you're like, oh, fuck. Can you imagine if this happened? Like, right. Yeah, and that's what Curb is really about, yeah. isn't it? And it's well, they setting say up it's, those... It is. It's that, it's that exaggeration and, like, the, this almost, like, the worst possible scenario thing. Like, yeah. the way that he's... But it, the, it's the, still realistic, though. You could still almost see it could happen. Yeah. The way that he's commenting on, like, sort of, uh, the cancel culture and stuff is that, you know, his, his uh, manager, Jeff Green... Uh, has lost like a bit of weight and he's like a little bit more like uh, not not so clean shaven so he looks like Harvey Weinstein yeah and a couple oh my and a, God. a couple of times in the show women are like oh my fucking god why is that fucking monster here and he's like what the fuck it's <laughs> Jeff like it's so fucking funny <laughs> so the funny thing is is my mum had watched a few episodes of Curb Your Enthusiasm and thought that was Harvey Weinstein it looks and just like him god. It, certain, because he really does look ways, like yeah him. it looks like him same build same sort of like big face and everything yeah, like it's, it's i just thought it was so funny because she was like he's yeah. in that curb your enthusiasm show i was like no mom no they're two completely different people so there's like <laughs> so, so, so there's that prop <laughs> element to it that sort of like solidifies like his wrongdoings you know what i mean it's like every time anybody accuses him of something He's like, no, no, come on, it was innocent, it was innocent, and then they see him with Jeff, and then they're like, ah, oh, fuck, no, it wasn't. Like you're, you know, <laughs> you're an asshole. You hang out with Harvey Weinstein, um, but like, the, it, it's just like, it's just funny stuff, right? Like he goes on a date with this woman, and like he has, he he videoed, like he he gets his phone and records his advances, so he's like very, very like like oh procedurally God, asking great. her if it's okay for him to put his hand on her shoulder and then can he like <laughs> kiss her and stuff and she's like agreeing to it and then he's like basically like can I fondle your breast and she's like no and he's like all right it's a no <laughs> and I'm fine with that <laughs> it's like all captured on tape it's fucking so funny it's awkward as hell to watch too but I mean that's it part is. of the charm of the but show I, I don't find it as um as cringy as I thought I would like I no. still find no, it I don't know why it is, it, it, is it's it? because he's such a He's such an unlikable character, but at the same time, there are times when you you are really rooting for him because some of the people he comes across are so fucking unreasonable and obnoxious. Like yeah. everybody is. He is half the people he bumps into are they're all very unpleasant, apart yeah. from like a few people. But yeah, they they all jump to conclusions. They're very judgmental. You know, it's like some of the stuff he's like, this is perfectly reasonable, and other people see it not that way. Like I, I love, love the episode I- where there's the soldier. And they all say, thank you for your service. Thank you for your service. And Larry's like, hi, nice to meet you. Like, why couldn't you thank him for his service, Larry? <laughs> and it's like, becomes a big thing where he feels, I don't have to thank him. You know, he didn't do it for me and all this kind of stuff. It was really exactly, funny. Exactly, exactly. Yeah. He's, he's got a finger on the pulse of kind of, of, of not, why, why do I have to be a sheep? Why are people really saying that? And, like, and it's the questions that we've all asked in the back of our mind, but we normally just ignore right. or don't care. He's We're like, the guy who actually gonna just say, yeah. challenges every norm and just says, no, yeah. I don't want to do that. Why should I? Explain it to me. And I res- just, respect that. Yeah, and yeah. most most people's yeah. response is you just have to. He's like, well, no, I don't. like you and your personal but trainer, that's, that's, what, that's the essence of stand-up, at least his generation of stand-up. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Like the the, the, the kind of commenting on Yeah, why like we observational do sort of humor. Right? Yeah, Comment, like the classic social, yeah, yeah. observation Social stuff. commentary and stuff. But I mean, that was where he came from, I guess. Yeah, it's not highly political, though. Which is interesting. All right, so here's a question. Here's a question for you guys about about stand up comedy. So I, I've watched um, quite a few episodes of Comedians in Cars Getting Coffee, the the Jerry Seinfeld. Oh thing. yeah, yeah, uh, sure. Which I, I really like. I'm a big fan of stand up comedy, and I all, like a lot of the comedians. And he gets writers on and stuff like that, and actors uh-huh. that are all funny. Some of them are not so good. Like I don't know why he got Seth Rogen on. The, you know, I, he had nothing the, to the say. only thing that puts me off about that show is that those some of those guys just like uh, rate themselves way too highly. You know what I mean? I get it. I get it. If you're like a, you know, Jerry Seinfeld level comedian, like you right. know, one of the most successful all time or whatever. But 
I hate when they start like talking shop about it and like sort of saying like this is how it should be and like you're not really a comedian if you're not doing this blah 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 and it's just like all right you know like, yeah so that, that, that was my my exact point was that one of the conversations that they had was that being being a stand up comedian is the hardest job in the world that was what they said now I, I that I, that immediately made me think fuck off there are much yeah, harder jobs yeah but but have you con- seen that consider this. Thing- how many really pipe. successful? <laughs> yes, yes all How of many them. Su- really successful stand-up <laughs> comedians are there? How yeah, many? There's quite a few, but really, but not in the same way. It. Most of them just turn up, do a few gigs, and they never really make it. There is a very small group of people you would consider successful stand-up comedians that can like really do well. Like there are a lot more singers and and uh, musicians than there are yeah, comedians. Of a comedian, a, a comedian can't. Um, hide behind uh, a studio like a musician can sort of right. thing right like uh, like a musician but you can't just teach it a musician can have support with like a like a like a studio band who might be exceptionally good uh which could make all the difference sort of thing a musician can hide behind studio technology as well like voice changing effects like all that kind of stuff um you can like i mean like they've proven time and time again with like x factor and pop idol and american idol and stuff like that that they can just manufacture these people out of nothing um and 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 make them successful but a comedian has to be not only funny but like like personality likable they have to be intelligent like fairly witty and stuff like that you know there's 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 a lot of like masteries involved but but also you you couldn't just go to school and learn how to be funny. No, like if you think about it, there are far more doctors. There are probably more. There are definitely more surgeons, brain surgeons in the world than successful comedians. Like you can, if you're smart, you can learn how to be a a brain surgeon. Well, you, can, you can learn how to be a I doctor. Mean, I'm not saying it's could, not incredible. I think you can train to be a comedian as well. I don't think you can. I, I don't, I don't I, think but you I can. think you you'd only I, I, do it if you had some sort of natural base of talent to begin with because right I, they all do I, train, I think like, I think you have to start very young yeah like these a lot of these famous comedians have been were funny they're funny kid at yeah. school I don't know do you know what I mean and they've they've always like been trying to make people laugh for their whole life and and often like I can see where they're coming from like with the, the hardest job in the world because I think that certain personality types are not gonna sit well with the the career of doing the same material every night to a crowd who are to, uh, are going to boo you on, or not laugh at some of your yeah. jokes and and crafting that thing and working and trying to make funny jokes it's it's, it's tough to be creative and come up with material and, and do, do it to a standard that is like enough to make a living off of and the risk and the so a little bit like being a being in any art form like being in a band or something or being in some something where you have to or doing arts that you have to then sell i don't know it's like that's not for everyone. It's not a safe career, is it, being a comedian? No. There's no stuff to fall back but on. But a I lot think of that- them, they, they're like, I had to work for like, I mean, C- Louis C.K. is a good example. The dude wasn't young when he made it to the big time. He'd had years and years and years as a stand-up comic, working all kinds of shit, and then he suddenly became really popular, and then it all obviously fell apart. But the point is, he, he wasn't like a young guy when he made it. No. Some guys like Eddie Murphy was successful from a very young age. Yeah, he was. Like yeah. He, he was one of the youngest successful comedians around and was a huge Hollywood star. But a lot of them, you know, it comes it comes later in in life. He had uh, um, when they they've honed the skills. Yeah. And I think um I think I th- I think like in Eddie Murphy's case and maybe in uh, other comedians cases as well is that if they're lucky enough to start from a young age and work clubs where more established people are working, they'll almost take them under their wing and like sort of you know what i mean like yeah. with eddie murphy i mean there are there are absolutely skills to you learn had like and, uh, and, you know richard pryor like had a lot to do with eddie murphy and eddie yes. murphy used to say that he thought that richard pryor just didn't like him because it was kind of like the, the a sign that richard pryor was like almost done sort of thing it's like oh here's this yeah, new yeah. G- new new black comedian who is basically yeah. going to replace you richard and he was like oh okay cool but like secretly like ah fuck this guy <laughs> like you know i'm not ready right. to like give up my crown sort of I thing i think it's very hard for people to do that to come to terms with you know decline of, course, yeah. of their of their of their industry or, or you know when you're on top it's it's everyone you know being the big thing and then not being the big thing and and someone's always going to be climbing and someone's always going to be rise uh, falling and it's i don't know like people people aren't 
it's not part of our culture or education to to learn to deal with this stuff or even like know where to start yeah. you know or people don't even think they have to and so people have to come to terms with it themselves often or or and some people have like support of their family and stuff and, and and other priorities you know like there's there's good examples in hollywood of people at the top of their career dropping out to be with their family or something like that you know for sometimes 10 or 20 years or even dropping off the face of hollywood entirely and other people just never stop yeah you know even to, into their like 80s Nicholas and 90s Cage, they're yeah. always doing stuff like christopher lee yeah. or something <laughs> like this, you know, Cage. Was... he's never gonna fucking yeah. stop is he jesus <laughs> no he's not but i mean the the dude's standards are, are so low yeah like a, yeah it's, it's like you can always find so. <laughs> like <laughs> literally the lowest he, he'll do anything well that was a tax thing though right too he had to like he got like in trouble and had to he didn't have any money. He went right. bankrupt, so he had to just do some quick work to get back in, get paid for his mortgage yeah. and stuff. But he'd been doing shit for a very long time. But there, the weird thing to me is there are some actors that seem to have this really great um, career ahead of them, and it just they stop being in stuff. Yeah, like I watched a thing about Ed Norton the other day. Ed Norton, uh, American History X. Yeah, he was the Incredible Hulk. Fight Club. Fight Club. And it felt like Ed Norton was in a lot of stuff. Ed Norton, Ed Norton, Ed Norton. And then the last thing I can remember seeing him in was Birdman. He was he was playing a part in that yeah. as an actor who's a complete shithead to work with. Yeah. And that's not that far from the truth because it turns out he's kind of a prick. And a lot of people are like, I'm never fucking working with that guy again because he's extremely particular about the way he does things. He wants to rewrite scripts and he wants it to have... He changes his lines a lot and just says, no, 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 I'm not doing that. It's got to be this way and everything. And that's it. Like, people just won't work with him. I mean, there must be... Brendan Fraser is a classic example of a guy who was in a lot of stuff. Yeah. And everybody knew Brendan Fraser. And then all of a sudden, the dude's not in anything. Like, he's just fucking done. Like, that's it. Yeah. And it, it must be terrifying as an actor, especially if that what kind happened? of did he actor. Get, did he get blacklisted or something? Though? No, no I mean, he just... He made a couple of really shitty movies. Yeah, I think he just w just was in just too much him. stuff. And yeah, I, don't, I just don't think he got many more sort of big opportunities after that. The thing is, he, the he goes. I think any any actor that pitches themselves as the lead, whether it be a leading man or a leading leading lady in a in a film, if you can't pull off lead anymore, and you're not a box office draw, you're done. Yeah, like it's a real gamble. Like if you pitch yourself as, I mean, Brendan Fraser, you know, lead man in in a, quite a few movies, and if he's no longer the lead man. He's no longer a box office draw, but he's still going to want to be quite high up on the billing. He's going to want to be front and center on the poster. You yeah. know, he's going to want this. He's going to want that. And studios would be like, well, no, we don't need you. We've got this other guy and people like him. So we're going to cast him. So then you need to be able to step back and say, all right, I'll just be support roles. Yeah. But people are going to be like, oh, shit, it's Brendan Fraser. Didn't he used to be a leading man? So it's like this whole, yeah. like if you see someone who used to, like if, if Tom Cruise only popped up in cameos now, very occasionally in some weird movie, you think, what the fuck happened to Tom Cruise's career? But instead, Tom Cruise is the guy. Tom Cruise is like at the top of the poster. Yeah, of course. His face and is he right gets there. He's big, the biggest... He still gets really big roles and stuff. Like right. He's a... So he's positioned think, as a yeah. lead. He could never go back to just being a supporting actor. I think that's that's about what again. It's about it's a, it's a, it's, a, it's like a, it's about where they've been, right? If they've if they're going from something big to something small, you know, you could, sometimes that's even like you know um, framed as just a passion project or like oh this famous guy is doing something he really wants right. to do you know even if it's like a small independent movie or something weird you just think ah oh, that's just something that he's he's, he's interested yeah. in sure or, they talked you know, him like, into it or something yeah or he maybe yeah, he knows so, the I guy think, but you know sometimes we assume it's like oh well god what, look at what Nick Cage is being forced to do I, I think the <laughs> only way it. back and this is true this is especially true uh, for women is that if you've been like the either the lead Woman in the in the film, like as the normally in Hollywood, it'll be like the love interest or whatever. You you then have this twenty or thirty year gap where you're no longer considered like. I mean, do you remember what's her fucking name? Ren Rene Russo. Rene Russo. Sure. Yeah. Right. So she was in one of the Lethal Weapon movies. Yeah. She was in a bunch of films. She was, yeah. As like the hot woman who's like the love interest, and then she's just kind of not in stuff for a while because she's not old enough to play the older maternal wise woman but she's not young enough to be love interested yeah that's anymore. a thing would, that's would, a thing with women right they it's like it, it it's harder for women i think in hollywood because of the types of roles that they play and stuff you know like they yeah you do hear this they, a lot they're either yeah. they're yeah. either young and like hot and all the magazines want to do like bits on them and, and blah, blah 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 or they're like um Judy Dench, you know what I mean? Like, right? Uh, exactly. But there's no that, in between. There's no there's no roles in between that where they can like really sort of um, 
you know, make a make a a, gig, a gigantic like uh, right. mark for themselves. Not once they've gone down that down that route yeah. of being the the eye can. Yeah. Because if you look at someone like Meryl Streep, say Meryl Streep's career has been pretty fucking good the whole way. Yeah. Because she's she's an actor first and foremost. She's not. She's she's she. There may be romance in the film, but it's not like she's on there. Because people are going to go, oh, fuck, yeah, Meryl Streep. I want to go see her tits. She's Meryl Streep. You know what I mean? You're admiring her because she's a great actor. Yeah. And she she picks the right parts. I mean, Megan Fox or whatever, she can't act for shit. I just want to see her tits. This is it. Like, uh, honestly, you see it. Like, James Bond gets older every, you know, the same James Bond or Daniel Craig gets older every episode, but his his girlfriends or love interest in the movie stay the same. Leonardo DiCaprio is, I mean, the, the, the movie version of it. You know, he's like 55 right. now, but he won't date a woman over like 25, yeah. you know, because he's just like constantly uh, recycling new ones. Yeah, it, it, it's, Ricky Gervais made a joke about him about and about the Golden Globes yeah, yeah. being like too oh, long. Yeah. It's like, oh, this it's like three hours long and, uh, and by the time it's over, Leonardo DiCaprio's girlfriend will be too old for him or something like that. It's like, <laughs> it pretty funny. <laughs> That kind of stuff is is really true. Like you know, you see it in Hollywood remakes where they get the same actors back. But obviously, but in in many cases, it's like you know, I don't know Harrison Ford coming back. But you know, his 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 love interest of the original movie is now like sixty years old, and it's like, well, we can't can't have him kissing her. We got to find someone uh, you know a bit younger. It's not like, for example, Daniel Craig's not kissing you know Judy Dench, is he? I reckon they should like <laughs> fucking. That would be great. I reckon they should do that though. I reckon they should just. Put turn it on its head. I don't think you they know, should do that. that. I wouldn't watch that. Let's just let's just have some realistic relationships in these things. I don't even I don't really know. want to watch Daniel Craig kissing somebody young either, though. Like, uh, I just don't really want to watch Daniel Craig. Full stop. Like, I don't care but what he's doing. The problem is Hollywood has this sort of responsibility to set the tone, right? And often, like, it doesn't do a good job on this thing. If if it if it, if it normalizes kind of old guys kissing. Young women. That's how we get Donald Trump being normalized yeah. kind of thing with his like, you know, young wife kind of thing. Like it's kind of a bit people are just cool with it because of Hollywood being so legitimizing it. I don't know. Hollywood has this role as a trendsetter and, and a and a ground level cultural influencer where it's like this is what our society is like. And a lot of things, like I've been watching a couple of YouTube channels about this, because one of them popped up on Reddit last week about like the double standards of um, like male uh, sexual assault in movies. You know, if, if, like a, if like a school kid is like with the, the South Park, and lots of people have talked about it before, but like if a school kid is like, you know, a teacher, a school, a school, a school boy and a teacher are getting it on. The school boy is like, oh, well done, high five, you know. Whereas, like, if it's a schoolgirl, a teacher, it's like completely, you know, demonized and terrible, you know. There's, there's this double standard there, and, and Hollywood kind of has helped to perpetrate that to some extent. Um, we don't necessarily see um, men being taken advantage of by women, you know. It's almost like the men always want it, or you know that that somehow it's good, and they're like, oh, you should be happy to get this, you know. Um, and, and obviously in many cases, you know, that's, it's not a good thing, you know, it's not cool. Um, and, and then people were not, you know, if you're not kind of consenting to this stuff, you know, it can be very dangerous, but, but Hollywood has, has had like a history of making, you know, it's certainly prison rape is a good example as well. Like we, it's like so prevalent in Hollywood that we, I mean, I always, I mean, I, and it, part of it is that, you know, don't go to prison or else you get, you'll get raped by a man. It's like, whoa, okay. I, I never want to go to prison because I don't want to get raped by a man, but it's almost understood that that's like a ground level. Like if you're going to go to prison, you're going to get raped by a man. And so maybe in prison, the prison officers are like, yeah, do you know what? There's a bit of man raping going on. It's all kind of cool. We allow it. Like <laughs> because of Hollywood, like, I don't know. It's, it's. Uh, do, do you see what I'm saying? Yeah, though? Yeah. Like the whole. I, I don't. The whole undertone. <laughs> I, I I kind of follow your point. Yeah. No, I don't. But like, but 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 like the the videos, like even like dropping the soap and stuff, has become this thing, which is even in kids' movies. Like like there's like Toy Story and like SpongeBob are making jokes. Wait, about wait, wait. There's a drop in the there's soap. There's a drop the what? soap joke in Toy Story. Yeah, there's they're everywhere. They're like absolutely so prevalent. Like yeah, but they're that, in uh, all. You, that's they're, because in kids. TV and and kids cinema and stuff. The 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 good studios make movies that uh, not only appeal that to children, jokes but in. they have very subtle adult humor in them as well. Yeah, so that, yeah. Th that that's true. But I just find it weird that that's in there. It is, but a kid would never be able to 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 know what it is. But that's true. You know, until they're old that's, enough. But to, I will say this about the whole the whole drop the soap thing is the idea that just dropping the soap like that's it. 
like you drop the soap, you bend over, pick it up, pow, that's it. They're raping you. Like, <laughs> well, exactly. They, they have to wait for you to drop the soap before they're like, well, if he drops that soap, I'm going in. Otherwise, yeah. you know, it'll be wait, too Wait, wait, Larry, Larry, back off. He dropped a comb. That's not soap. <laughs> it's a comb. It's not soap. It's not soap. <laughs> it is a Larry David thing, which, which makes you just pause for a second and be like, was that a prison rape joke? Like that I just watched, like, is that actually cool? Is that actually still... Should I be laughing? You know, I mean, it's a little bit of like you're, you're a sheep, though. You're just laughing along. You're just, you know, sh- you know, saying to the soldier, "Thank you for your service again." You know, is is it something which we should be kind of more aware of? It's now? like a, it's like a, it's like an in joke sort of thing, right? Like, because because you you grew up in a time where like that joke was made or it was popularized, and twenty years later, the joke is made again in some new way or some subtle way or whatever you're like oh yeah that's familiar to me haha <laughs> i'm laughing sort of thing it doesn't actually make it funny but it's just it's just it's just what it is right like what so what's this what are these people saying that we shouldn't laugh at that or like you should, we should feel bad for laughing at that or well, no but i think question we should just ourselves be, more or something i think you should just be more sensitive to what you're joking about like i think that if you continue to perpetrate a stereotype that is you know that if you go to prison as a man, you're going to be raped. Um, like it, it's it's a dangerous thing. It has this Im- massive, broad effect um, on society that you are trivializing male, you know, abuse, and you are um, laughing at men who are more feminine or more f- more, you know, for being inferior. Oh, or did did, it's, did it's you a- did you get recommended the same video I did? that pointed out that uh, there are an awful lot of instances in Hollywood movies where women sexually assault men and it's seen as like a kind of a jokey thing. Yes, that's the one I'm talking so about. So I watched yeah. that and there was a scene in there, I think it was Mindy, is her name Mindy Kaling? She was in The Office. She was Kelly in The Office, the annoying secretary. She's the writer as well, I think. Yeah, she, she she, she, she's, she's one of the writers for sure. So there's a scene, I think James Franco was passed out and she kisses him while while he's passed out. And he wakes up. He's like, oh, help. And she's like, sure, shut up. It didn't happen, all this kind of stuff. And the interesting thing is, if those roles were reversed, we would be like, this is entirely inappropriate. I mean, if the, if the male hero of a movie was sexually assaulting uh, the female lead in the movie, it would be seen as like, holy shit, what the fuck? How did this get made? But it does happen a lot. There is a scene in Horrible Bosses where Jennifer Aniston rapes one of her employees, and it's played for, for laughs. Like, it's a comedy. So it is it is weird, like you said, how it's seen as uh, something to joke about. And I, I just think a lot of the time, these movies are not written by younger people. They're written by older people. And you see the same jokes popping up and the same references popping up. And it's just, I mean, I'll give you an example. I was watching The Simpsons with my kids. And if you look at the first few series of that, that was made in the 90s, bear that in mind, like mid-90s these episodes were coming out, there were references to like things that happened 20, 30 years yeah, ago. Yeah, of I'm course, thinking, yeah. Like the, yeah, but I, I'm the thinking writing these teams. writers are older guys. Yeah, they are. Who, who is getting these references? Like these aren't written really for the audience. They're like, so I think the same thing happens in Hollywood. That By the time you get established, by the time you're like the lead writer on a big movie and everything or a big TV show or whatever, but you're older. Again, this, so your references are going to be older and your attitudes are going to be older. The Simpsons was designed for primetime TV. And I remember when it came out, it was everybody wanted to watch it, like kids, oh, yeah. like kids especially. But it, it, it had at lots of adult humor in it that kids just yeah. didn't understand the references or whatever, but they still loved it. Like it's one of those... It's 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 that formula, right? Pixar does it really well. Like lots of lots of studios do it really well, where they they can appeal massively to children and make this thing that children just want to have or you know call their own or whatever. But it, it just has lots and lots of adult humor in it as well. That's subtle enough for kids to not pick up on it, but it makes it uh, entirely not tedious for you to have to sit through two hours of it with your kids sort of yeah. thing. You know what I mean? Simpsons is no different. Yeah, it's very clever. It was on, very you know, it was on early, like it was usually on at like 7.30, 8 o'clock at night. So like yeah. if you were 10, 11 years old, you were staying up to watch it like easy. Oh, you yeah, know? yeah. And like, and you did. I mean, we didn't have cable, so I couldn't it was, watch it. It was but... the popular thing. You, you didn't go to school the next day having not watched it. 
it or else you, right. you know what I mean like and I mean I, I think it's hard like you look back at 20 30 years at these things and they are a product of their time and they're a product of the people who wrote them and we're a product we're not that smart we're a product of our cultural indoctrination if you like you know we've been brought up with things in a way that is that we find acceptable or not acceptable and, and sometimes we have to stop now and say okay Maybe we shouldn't be making jokes about this, but sometimes you don't even realize. I don't know if the talks. joke like, sometimes is, the, 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 is about that though. That's what I like. You, like the, I, I can see the comedy in reversing a role. Like, uh, like, like, oh, like you're right. the context and, of that and, and, is and sometimes, sometimes maybe right, not like right. amazingly well thought out or whatever. But there is definitely an element of comedy uh, to and sometimes role the way reversal, to right? bring attention to these role reversals is to is to yeah. satirize it, is to do an extreme example where people. People were like, oh shit, yeah, like because in South Park the way they did it was very much like aware. It was like you know, because because I think like Kyle or someone goes to the stand, goes to the police, and is like you know, um, there's like a guy in my class who's like seeing one of the teachers, and they're like, nice, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Are yeah. Like, yeah, yeah. Do you know what I mean? It's very much like it's very yeah, cleverly yeah, done, and so, but 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 we, I mean, I don't think that we should like cancel comedy that we love because the writer or guy who did it turns out to be an arsehole no. or have views that we don't agree with. I think there is a lot of that, like a lot, for example, comedy um, works best when it's me. on the very edge sort of thing. Like, like, you know, we well, do find yeah. like upsetting things sometimes quite funny. And especially if it's presented in a clever way or like, uh, you know, the it, it, it's, it's it's odd, isn't it? Like I think I think it's easier to watch comedy when you're not like uh, affected by any of the stuff being discussed, right? And it's probably a lot more difficult when you when you when you take it more personally or are affected by the stuff that happens. You know, like I so, like I can laugh at a prison rape joke because I've never been raped in prison. I've never been to prison before, so sure, you know, it, it's not the funniest goddamn thing I've ever heard. But like, whatever, like. Like there's a whole that no, that whole segment I, 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 of uh, Norm Macdonald on uh, on that YouTube channel and oh, just man. the prison rape jokes from Saturday Night Live and like his, his earlier stuff. Yeah, he, honestly, his, his stuff is they're fucking like he does he does that a lot where yeah. he, he he pushes the line, but he does it because he knows he's going to yeah, get a, a response. But it 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 is funny. His delivery is amazing. It is good, very funny. I, and I, exactly, I don't want to devalue like that. Like a good comedian will make you laugh at at jokes that and and, and you can still enjoy stuff. Like I, I think that uh, okay, a good example is like J.K. Rowling and. Um, you know, actually, for example, someone tweeted me this week saying you should unfollow um, Graham Linehan, who wrote like Father Ted and yeah. black books and stuff. And I, and I think when I signed up to Twitter about ten years ago, I automatically followed a lot yeah. of people who I was a fan. Sure, of, or know, thought like you were. Jimmy Carr. I mean, you don't and know these Bill people. Bailey. You and... write a show that you like. No, because I want to see funny tweets yeah. on Twitter from them. You know, I want. I like Father Ted. I want to see his funny tweets. You know. And someone tweeted me and said you should unfollow him um, because he's done a load of anti-trans stuff and commentary. And I, I was like, do you know what? I don't think I've. It, I, I, I will. I'm just yeah, going to unfollow him. Whatever, I don't think it's worth but... the trouble. He's. I don't. Th I don't think that this guy particularly is obviously like. I. But it's a little bit in my head though. I'm a little bit like, oh, Father Ted's now a bit tainted. Like Harry Potter's a little bit tainted but, by. You know, the thing is, okay, fine. You've unfollowed him. You've unfollowed him off the suggestion of somebody, but. You haven't you haven't unfollowed him for like the pure reason, right? You've just unfollowed him because it's but like it's still oh, tough in my head to somebody's pressuring me, and I don't want to be seen as somebody who agrees with what this guy might have said, but even that, though that's, I haven't that's looked that's into what cancel, it. That's what cancel culture is exactly. about. Exactly. I, I still think the main thing the main thing to do is if I mean, first of all, I don't want to know. Graham Linehan. I don't care what his opinions no, are. I want to Father see, Ted is a funny if he, show. That's if he what posts I care about. something on Twitter that's even remotely funny and related to Father Ted, great. That's why I followed him in the first place because of Father Ted. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. I mean, also, to, Twitter is real easy to be as puritanical as you like about whatever it is you believe in. But I guarantee you, even people you know really well, there'll be something, of some course. opinion that they hold that you think. What? That's fucking bizarre. Like I can't get my head around. That's weird. That you, you, what are you going to stop seeing that person because there's something you disagree with them about? I don't know. I mean, I, I know lots of people whose politics are wildly different from mine, or their opinions about all, all kinds of stuff are wildly different from mine. Yeah. It doesn't change the fact that that they're they're essentially my, a decent enough person that I can be friends with them. I just think it's no, absolutely. it's not worth 
analyzing with a micro microscope every single aspect of a person's personality because no one is clean. No one is going to come out of it and you're going to be okay with everything they say. And I, do, and I don't think they're evil if they have uh, flaws like that or beliefs necessarily either. I think it's that they're a product of their their cultural like um, like teachings, like what they have been informed of over the years via media and Hollywood and books and people and friends and family and surroundings and locales. You know, if you're brought up in a local a small village in India, I'm sure you're going to hold views that are, you know, intolerant towards something. And who knows what that is or, or views that are reprehensible in other parts of the world. You know, if you're in China and you're eating deer noses, fucking go for it. Like, you know, I, I, that's part of your culture. And I think it's very hard of me to criticize that because, you know, at that's something which they are not going to change their view on very easily. And, and you know, I was, I didn't even, I don't even think about a lot of my biases, you know, until I watch a video on YouTube that, that tells me maybe you should question this thing. Like there's so, being a scientist is about questioning. It's about constantly uh, analyzing everything you believe. Yeah. But there's so many aspects of things we believe from religion to politics, to people to, and there's so many like gray areas too, but so many gray lines that come down. Like, and each case is different. You know, every, you could say, oh, you know, that this is good for society because maybe prison rape fucking, you know, discourages people from committing crimes. Maybe the people are so scared of being raped in prison that they yeah. won't do crimes. Like, you know, you know, everything has like this other fucking side to it that, you know, you can't, I, I'm a, I'm a bit of a contrarian. I love to try and argue and see the opposite side, and it's so hard to do that sometimes. And sometimes I feel like I've been taken, I've been blindsided, and I've learned something. I'm like, damn, why have I been laughing at prison rape jokes for like 35 years? I feel like maybe I shouldn't, but then it's tough. It's, it's really like, it's really. And so I, what I'm saying is, don't be too hard on yourselves if you find that your 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 beliefs are challenged. You know, I like, don't hold a strong belief on that though. Like you know, like like I. If 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 that offends somebody um, to to laugh at that and they're around me or whatever, I I would apologize. I would say, oh sorry, yeah. you know, like it's not worth clinging to that kind of I, shit. I, I'm a reasonable person. I'm not I'm not going to fight for my right to laugh at prison rape jo rape jokes. I just <laughs> exactly. don't care enough. I've but equ but equally, <laughs> I'm I'm not I'm not going to um to to falsely support like like trans rights and stuff as well by unfollowing somebody on Twitter because. As much as I support somebody's right to to be who they are or who they want to be and and freedom and stuff like that, these are things that don't really affect me. I'm not going to be as passionate about them as somebody who is who is affected by it, you know, or or living that life or whatever. You know what I mean? I, I think there's Absolutely. I think there's a lot of uh, like almost like false support um, for movements nowadays just to appear sort of like politically correct or 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 popular or something like that and i, I don't agree with that either I, I you know i think people that are coming out and and being like overly sort of supportive about something that they have nothing to do with or whatever is 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 not it's not a genuine thing it's 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 lying you see that and you see that in hollywood a yeah, lot of course as well, you do where they'll, of course they you cast do. something and it's like the cast is like you can tell they've they've fucking they brainstormed the shit out of how to get the perfect cast for essentially for to avoid bad reviews on on Twitter and in the media. Sure, it, it feels disingenuous. Yeah, it, that's it, you it. know it's not from the heart. No, you know they, they, they haven't changed. They're just going with the trends. It the is. Time. It's a. It's it's some sort of formula for like popularity or for money or sales or something like that and it, it doesn't feel nice it doesn't feel good like uh, like yeah we should be on top of that stuff too i wouldn't really I, I, expect I think you should somebody to support uh me with 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 just about anything really but like you know what i mean like it's i, I don't know like i i, I think i think just I, I think it's important to just be yourself and not get caught up in the in the hype of everything you know what i mean like just yeah like like and don't be an asshole either. Yeah, th that's a better but there's rule. This, there's this fear, though. There's this fear that if you... It's a very animal thing. It's that if you change your mind, you're seen as flaky or if you're seen as like... Uh, you're seen as like... Um, it's it's like a good thing to hold a, 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 a hold ground and be brave and stand your ground and sure, defend your argument to the last. Yeah. And, and sometimes you've dug that hole so much, you're like, fuck, I've you can't, I can't change my mind yeah, now yeah. or else I'm going to look like an asshole. Do you, yeah. wonder if, do you wonder if they're clinging on in the hope that 
they'll eventually be vindicated as well. He was right, and he said it all along. Like that's I don't know. <laughs> you're if just it's hoping, that. I think I, I, hoping one day things will swing your in your favor. I think people are <laughs> uh, people seem to value, and and that it's that confidence. It's that that kind of that 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 authority of someone who is just blindly confident. For some reason, people value that, and it is weird. And people are scared to change their minds or be seen to be changing. Man, their you minds. know what? And, and, and no, but that's the opposite. You should be willing to constantly. But bounce back and forth yeah. on, on, on I feel like things. this podcast would be way better if I could actually articulate my thoughts like in an intelligent manner and not just like <laughs> being a dope and this is what I, this is the, what I said at the very start of the podcast is that words are not enough like we we I think More we need we need words. graphs that's we this need week's, pictures that's this week's theme is the song More we Than need, Words like, prepared by Extreme speeches that are finally honed and crafted to not 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 because but a lot of the time people will get the wrong end of the stick from this podcast they're going to think lewis said this sentence and people are going to take it out of context and it'll and it'll mean something which is the opposite of what i meant yeah it to me. i know I, I it's think a very complex topic i i i i, I do my best i i'm I, I think i'm a reasonable person i don't think i'm overly offensive to any one person or group of people i i don't have hate in my heart for anything other than people who are sweaty at overwatch and uh, other competitive <laughs> games no you know what i mean like I, i'm not going out of my way to like spread hate or to spread misery or whatever i think i'm like a, a pretty easy going uh you know happy go lucky sort of sort of person and a live and let live kind yeah of guy. and i think I, I think or live and let die i think that's that's enough i don't feel like i i need to do more than that you know what i mean james bond kissing judy dench next Bond movie. Let's um, let's get it. She's I don't dead. want it. Let's get she it. She died in one of the previous movies, didn't she? What? Not my little let's Judy. Let's bring her back. Fuck it. Bring her back as a Bond girl. Not my little Judy. I reckon she could rock she it. She comes out of the sea in a bikini. One of those big onesie old lady bikinis. And James Bond yeah. is cracking a boner right there on the like beach. The 1920s where it's like where she's got one of those dressing screens and stuff. Yeah. <laughs> she's 85, guys. Holy shit. Oh, man. Can't be. I, it, it's, it, it's tough nowadays, isn't it? It's tough. It feels like you have to constantly just say the right things and say, and, and not and, and not say the, the wrong things or whatever and i think that like i think it's a shame in some ways you know i think there's i think it's a lot of in in some ways a lot of like censoring uh, like unnecessarily too right? i do wonder if people are as sensitive um as as the current culture would imply they are i think people are tougher i do think we should definitely work towards not excluding people with language and stuff like that because it must be pretty shitty to constantly feel less than everybody else because of things that people are saying casually as just like part of all oh, that's just a thing that, that happens and we talk about stuff in in movies as informing public opinion and stuff like that and i think everyday language and everyday attitudes do as well yeah but i don't think that we need to be quite as um as eggshell you know sort of treading as, as we are in regards to to people and most most people that's the, that's the other thing to remember most most people on the planet or even in whatever country you're in just don't give a shit about this kind of stuff they they don't have a strong opinion one way or the other no. most people i find have a pretty much live in that they've oh that's their business no problem you know i think yeah it, it's, i think it's the, the majority specifics of people yeah. of going and telling someone you're not a allowed to do the, this a anymore. lot of the media that we that we consume a lot of the stuff that we read is very it, you're you're meant to believe that it's the vast majority speaking, but it's it's like anything, right? It's always yeah. I think I think most people it's understand. It's always like that a handful of people. Things are pre things are pretty decent. You know, things are going okay. It, they're, yeah. they're, they're, change takes time. I I think a lot of the time, the especially from I mean, I consider myself a pretty progressive person. A lot of my my personal views. People on my side of things, as it were, want change really fast and now, and everything has to be exactly the way they want it. And public attitudes take time to change. They yeah, do change, sure. but slowly. And I just yeah. think, yes, you know, it's, it's all right to be impatient and look for change, but it doesn't have to happen overnight. As long as you can just gradually introduce ideas that everything is cool and maybe we can be nicer to each other and this is a this is okay and acceptable, but it doesn't have to be like instantly you either do this or you're cancelled because all that does is is push get pushback and people think, yeah. oh, fuck you, I, you know, people feel under attack. That's what you want to get rid of. So I, I've always said for, for a very long time that I feel like the ideas of the left appeal to people at a base level, but we have the worst salespeople in the world. And <laughs> we cannot sell our ideas in a way that appeals to people, even though sometimes they're in their exact interests. 
Oh, we sell it this as is, this, is it. this, you've got to do this, and almost like, how dare you, and you're wrong. And it's like, well, the right doesn't really do that. The right just says, hey, even they make all these promises, they lie, and I'm not obviously not saying everyone on the right is a liar and everything, but a lot of the current right-wing politics that you see and anti-progressive agendas and stuff, um, they, they, they make very easy promises, which are, we're with you. And we're not going to tell you to change. And these people are wrong. That it's much I easier. I promise I'm going to turn up to work most it's days. It's much easier to believe that you were already right, that you were right all along, that you don't need to change, that this is some crazy shit, rather than saying, hey, maybe we we were wrong about this and we need to change. For the exact reason you said is people don't want to backpedal. They don't want to appear that they were wrong all along. It's very brave to come out and do that, even though it shouldn't be brave. I change my mind yeah. about stuff all the time based but on new evidence. this is why scientists don't run the country, because they appear as wishy-washy. They appear as, you know, right. they, we have As everybody says, oh, you, no, you should think the Earth was flat, scientists, and now they think it's round. Well, they make up your mind. It's like that's the whole point. Yeah. Is that we changed? We figured it out, you know. And society should change in the same way. But instead, it's seen as, oh, they can't say anything these days. And you just think, well, you can. You can say an awful lot of things these days. We're just asking gradually, and I would hope gently. Some of these things are not cool to say. But instead, everybody, everybody pushes back. Everybody's arguing and screaming at each other. Everybody wants everything to change overnight to their exact specifications and you end up with a shit show. Much like this podcast. Anyway, see you later. Uh, <laughs> just joking. That was a good one. Uh, man, we ranted a lot today. It was very ranty. It was. That was a ranty, thoughtful I had a lot to get off episode. our chest, I feel, you know? I don't know. Yeah, I just, yeah. I've been thinking about this stuff and it's nice to talk to you guys Every about it. Every once in a while, you have to have a big blowout, don't you? you just, just bear in mind a... that this was just a conversation between three people. I'm, I'm yeah. sure if we listened three on- Three old on... Right. idiots who've watched a YouTube video. But if we listened on, on, on all of your conversations, I bet you say some dumb shit too. This is just an unedited splurge of thoughts and ideas and conversation. And just take it as that. Don't think of it as some kind of manifesto. Yeah. Yeah. Change the world. Vote for me. Raise up. Bye. See you. Um, <laughs> see you guys. See you guys next week. Love you lots. Bye. Thanks for listening. Bye. 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 bye.